Hi, welcome to Think Tech. We are raising public awareness on energy, technology, globalism, and diversification. This show is center stage. I'm your host, Donna Blanchard, very proud managing director of Kuhu Kuhua Theater. <laughs> We're coming to you live from Pioneer Plaza in the heart of downtown Honolulu, very near Kuhu Kuhua Theater. Today, I am going to be talking with guests, two of the actors from the upcoming show. My name is Gary Cooper, written by Victor Roger. It's going to be at Kumukuhu Theater from February 22nd, no, January 22nd through February 22nd. We'll be talking with Joe Ramsey and Fata Samanu Klutz in just a moment. First, I want to let you know that we broadcast live every weekday um, from noon to 5, and you can watch our shows streaming on thinktechhawaii.com. You can also see all of our shows archived on YouTube, and you can check out all of our archived shows also on thinktechhawaii.com. So let me get to my guests here. Joe Ramsey and Fata Samanu Klutz are actors appearing in My Name is Gary Cooper. The show is a unique and shocking Shockingly funny tale of sexual revenge. That's coming from theaterview.com. Joe and Fata are also of Samoan heritage, playing Samoans in this show about the influence of the Western world in Samoa. So I'm looking forward to the conversation. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Donna. Hi. Good to be here. It's good to have you here. It's good to, I mean, I see you every night in rehearsals, but it's nice to have you as my captive guests mm. on the show where you have to answer my questions. Uh, you're the <laughs> boss now. Yeah, I'm the you're boss the now, boss. so get used to it, <laughs> Gary Cooper. Um, so let me start off by saying that Joe plays Gary Cooper and Fata plays um, Salamuana, a woman in... Um, Samoa in the 50s when the film Return to Paradise is shot there with Gary Cooper. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And just to, uh, I'll, I'll give a, would you like to give a synopsis of the show? <laughs> oh. Go on. How would, how would you describe the show, Gary Cooper? Um, I guess it's about uh, two different worlds colliding now. So it's as far as I was told, it's kind of based off that golden era of uh, Hollywood cinema in the Pacific, and specifically Return to Paradise is kind of the rough frame. And uh, in Return to Paradise, it's a Palangi man coming to Samoa, but in the play, they flip it. So it's a Samoan man coming to uh, Palangi world and uh, turning things around over there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to give too much That's away, good. you know? That's good. Come check out the show, you know? <laughs> I will give away that Palangi means Howley, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Roughly the same. Um, what's the actual uh, uh, translation of Palangi? Palangi? Um, the people that burst from the sky. Ooh. And so the, the etymology of Palangi is burst from the heavens. And so, That's um, a little more flattering than the literal it is. translation <laughs> of Howley. Yes, no yes. So it's it's a, a much um, gentler term than Howley. Yeah. Uh, so perhaps that's why you know um, Palangi have been um, well accepted in Samoa uh, at different times, except maybe in the mid 18th century um, when. You know, some of the French had problems there, so Samoa was left alone for a while. But, but already the name was, you know, the the label was uh, around before then. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it it's, it it is not a pejorative term. No, like, no. Okay. Um, well, that's good. Uh, <laughs> I'm half Bala. And you're half Bala. That's yes, right. So it's okay. Yeah. You it's own okay. That. <laughs> yes. Yes. It took a while yes. to own it. Huh? Yeah. 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 It did. Yeah. I think what's tough, I think, I was raised in Samoa, and it's especially where I'm from, it's not a lot of um, half Palangi kids. So you get made fun of a lot for being a different color, and you kind of speak not as fluently. Mm. I think anyone who's raised in Samoa would know that being a Fakasi or half Samoan, half mm. Palangi is kind of tough growing up. But then when you go anywhere else, they look at you and they think you're Samoan. Like, oh no, you're Samoan, you're brown. But when you're in Samoa, you're white, you know? So you always kind of feel. You know, in between. Yeah, in between. <laughs> in between. Did you grow up in Samoa? Yes, I did. Um, born in American Samoa, but raised in Western Samoa. So I grew up during the colonial period. In fact, I was very young when they um, did the film. 
uh, Return to Paradise. Oh. But I didn't get to see it until I um, started teaching at UH. And so uh, Return to Paradise is, uh, is, is one of the movies I show uh, to, um, uh, to illustrate you know, some of the, you know, uh, the themes that I talk about. So that's what my students are watching this week in preparation for coming to the show <laughs> next week. That is so awesome. Yeah. I love it that you're forcing your students to yes, come Yes, yes, <laughs> it's a must. It's so relevant to their course yeah. at the moment that uh, uh, they, they're going to uh, be coming next week. And, uh, and this uh, group uh, consists of mostly non samoans so uh, many of them are new to but I had one girl uh, say yesterday I don't know anything about the Samoans and so I told now you're gonna have a good diet of, <laughs> <laughs> of Samoa and uh, you know through Return to Paradise and the, and the play oh yeah so uh, and, and what classes do you teach I teach a 200 level course I teach all literature courses um, now and then a language course but uh, it's mainly about Samoan writers what the Samoans have, have written. Uh, so Victor Raja uh, is one of the, the writers in the, in the reading list. Oh, yeah. and he always has been, not just No, this is, he's just now you know, getting into, time. yeah. But, um, but we mainly talk about our famous writers, Alba Wendt and Sia Figuel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so. You know what's interesting though, is that even though it's a, uh, I guess you'd call it a Samoan play, um, I was surprised to hear, like, Nick, um, Chris, talking about how he can relate to the relationships in the right. story. So I think people might think, oh, it's only for sad moons, or, mm -hmm. but it's not, though. I think the themes in the play um, go across cultural they're boundaries. They're universal. You know? Yeah, they are universal. Yeah. 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 I think the themes in the plays, well, well, there are themes in this play that go way beyond mm -hmm. cultural differences and, and skin tone differences mm -hmm. that, yeah, yeah that... Oh, and they go the other way. When I moved to Hawaii, it was, it was, and specifically I moved to Hawaii to work with Kumukuhua Theater. So coming from the Chicago area, I was suddenly surrounded by, uh, I, I was the outsider for the first time in my life. Mm -hmm. I was the outsider and I was a minority. The one who, yeah, it was very different and I needed to learn to fit in. And even um, differences that, I didn't think about the cultural differences, my sense of humor. Mm. I, no one laughed at my jokes for the first year <laughs> I was here. <laughs> you know, it's, there's, there, there are yeah. differences you don't yeah. think about until you're actually in the situation. And that's part of the reason why I love theater of place, because mm. you really, mm. you bring a culture, yeah. you, you can bring it into someone's life for two hours. Mm. You really are dipping them in it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Then that sort of uh, immersion, yeah. I, you yeah. can't really get anywhere else. Yeah. It's just not the same when you watch it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's uh, why Hawaii is quite unique because of the diverse groups, you know, um, that make up the demographics of Hawaii. Mm. How many um, Samoans did you say are on this island? Um, in the state, um, give and take maybe fifteen to twenty thousand, and so I would say ninety percent, uh, maybe a little bit more, live on Oahu. Yeah. Mm. So, so it's it, yeah, quite a few, um, but not as as you know big as the other groups. So, but we're we're growing mm -hmm. uh, population, and quite a fluid uh, population too in oh, terms yeah. of travel. Oh yeah. You know, because of of uh, uh, the political status and the relationship with the United States, American Samoa nationals travel quite freely. Uh, between uh, American Samoa and, oh. and the states, oh, yeah. uh, so there's there's always movement movement um, from Samoa to here up to the mainland and back and forth. So mm. yeah, so um. <laughs> okay, so that that's that's a much larger population here than I had imagined. Mm. What are your thoughts, uh, Fata? Uh, especially because you you're teaching mm. the film uh, originally. Um, I'd love to know what you teach about the film, separate from the show, uh, um, Return to Paradise. Mm -hmm. Can you give mm -hmm. us just a few thoughts that... Well, um, one of the themes that, um, uh, that we highlight um, are gender relations uh, in the film. Um, 
between, you know, the, the Samoans and the outsiders, you know, Samoan women and the outsider. Um, and, and then the intra gender relations, you know, how the women especially um, um, fare in Samoan society. And I think uh, the film brings out that power that Samoan women have uh, in certain roles. And, and that's highlighted by uh, one of the chief's wives uh, being quite um, in, the, in the forefront in the protest against um, the, out, the, the, the church, which is the outsider uh, coming in. So issues of representations uh, prevail in, in, in these classes. Um, but um, I try to guide the, my students to think about how the piece of art, you know, tells a lot of stories about the human condition in that particular era, a particular place, mm -hmm. and so on. And so many, most of my students have not had in-depth studies in literature. So, you know, uh, when I say it's, it's, you know, the arts, storytelling. Uh, but the term literature itself can be problematic for some of them, I think because there's been an overkill in K-12 education oh. <laughs> with book reviews and all that. Um, but I bet but your class is fun. <laughs> I try to, I try to. It's uh, the millennials, I don't know if you're, you're a millennial, Joe, but yes. the millennials do not like to read. So now we're um, using Joe. a lot of the secondary <laughs> media. I mean, they like to text, yeah, they mm. use their thumb. Uh, their thumbs to um, you know do all kinds of things about reading. Yeah. It's just that I guess the times. Uh, so film, you know, and and um, and other genres of in in the arts really come in not to help. I mean, we can't just force them to read the books. YouTube has become a wonderful tool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, speaking of fluid, that's fluid, and you can make a film with a cell phone. <laughs> I know. Um, so, so, what were your thoughts when you initially read the script? Oh, I was just I'd laughing. like to hear this from both of you. All <laughs> right, oh, yeah, you talk. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. um, man, to be honest, when I came for the audition, I only read the audition piece. So I wasn't really sure what the whole story was about. It was just for fun, you know. I was just procrastinating. I had a paper due for one of my classes. I was like, at Starbucks around the corner. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm just going to go, you know, relax and go see what's happening over there and just have fun. And when I actually had to, my first time reading through the whole thing was at the read through when the whole cast was already selected. Oh. And when I read some of the parts of the script, I was like, man, what am I getting myself into, man? Like, people are going to come watch me do this stuff. Like, what are they going to say about me? <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of shocking, I think. Yeah, it's definitely not my personality, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have to keep telling myself what um, the director keeps telling me is that it's the character, it's not you, you know, it's not what you would do, it's what the character Gary would do. Yeah. So when I was explaining to my sister the play and she was helping me run lines, she's like, ew. <laughs> like. Maybe this would be a good <laughs> point in time for me to say this. This show is not suitable for but. more sensitive viewers. <laughs> and if that titillates you, then you definitely should come see the show. Okay. <laughs> there are, um, how should we say this? The, your character, um, Gary Cooper, uh, named after the Gary Cooper, uh, comes to L.A. and he has been, um, his life has been, wh what did I write in my promo piece for it? His life has been roughly shaped by that people on the, of that film, that film's involvement uh, on yeah. the island, and he's looking for a mm -hmm. reckoning. Yeah, I think he's, uh, when he arrives in the States, he's a fragile character, I think, so it d doesn't take much to break him, and I think he breaks when he, <clears throat> when he arrives in the mainland, mm -hmm. in the States, and uh, people do some crazy things when they're broken or feel desperate or, um, uh, you know, when they feel hopeless. I think that's just a reflection of what his character does, and it's not unimaginable, I think, you know? You know, for, uh, and I'm also going to say that you've never been on stage, you've never acted in a play before. You've been on no. stage as a dancer. Yeah, I just, I moved here maybe three years ago to the North Shore from the Big Island, where I was um, 
working at a Hawaiian charter school, and then before that, I went to the University of Hawaii at Hilo. I just moved here. I had some family here I wanted to be close to, and then across the street was uh, the Polynesian Cultural Center. So I just went audition on a whim there. We didn't grow up dancing or anything, but I've always had this secret desire to mm. dance, you know. So at church we were raised in, we're not allowed to do like Samoan dancing. We're only allowed to do church uh, functions. Evangelical kind yeah, of Yeah, evangelical. So we can do hand motions to church songs, but never Samoan dancing. If the village was preparing a number for like our flag day ceremonies, we weren't allowed to join in. So this was my chance to like, you know, learn more about the performance side of being Samoan. Oh. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to ask you to pause right there. We're going to take our first break. We will be right back. Please stay put. Hi, I'm Jay Fidel. I'm host of uh, Hawaii, the State of Clean Energy, which is our flagship show, which plays 4 to 5 p.m. every Wednesday. And the, uh, the supporters of that show are uh, Hawaii Energy Policy Forum and uh, Hawaii Energy. And luckily enough, we have representatives of both of them right here today to tell you more about what they think about the show. Uh, Sharon Moriwaki at my left is uh, co-chair of Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, and she goes first. Sharon? Thank you. Thank you, Jay. I'm so glad that we have this Hawaii, the state of clean energy. This was uh, two years ago when we started this, and we have continued it because it's so important, and there's so many developments happening across the state. And we hope you'll tune in every Wednesday, 4 to 5. It's wonderful. And uh, Ray is uh, Hawaii Energy. Ray, what is your thought about the same subject? Well, I, I agree completely with Sharon uh, that uh, we are talking about every Wednesday, 4 to 5, uh, we talk about some of the most important subjects that uh, are affecting the islands uh, now and into the future. Uh, energy, clean energy, we need it. Uh, we often run into uh, new ideas that we had not uh, thought about before. Uh, we did just today, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I think we're going to have more of that uh, in the future. So. Uh, come on down and, uh, and watch us uh, 4 to 5 on Wednesdays, um, and we'll uh, see what happens. We'll see you then. Aloha. Aloha. Hi, we're back and we're live. This is Center Stage on the Think Tech Hawaii Digital Series. I'm your host, Donna Blanchard, very proud managing director of Kumakuhua Theater. I'm talking with two of the actors from the show. My name is Gary Cooper, which is written by Victor Roger. It opens at Kumakuhua Theater on January 22nd and runs through February 22nd. Kumakuhua.org is where you go for your tickets. I am talking with two of the actors from the show, Joe Ramsey and Fata Simanu Klutz. Sorry. I'm not accustomed to saying your last name. <laughs> You're Salamawana to me. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so during the break, and I should never allow this to happen. People say interesting things during the break. <laughs> but we're going to have to. Uh, we're going to have to circle around and bring that back. That um, Joe, for you, some of the scenes in the show that were um, that are a little. Um, uh, risque in nature mm. were difficult for you. I didn't. I didn't realize that in the Samoan culture, uh, the elder women are um, of greatest respect. Yes. Is that what you said? Mm. Yeah. So even though you did, you know each other before? I, I seen um, her once at mm. the orientation for the. I just got into a grad program for the Pacific Island Studies, and I saw her on campus. Oh. Okay. And then at an art. Um, mm. um, Shigeyuki Kihara, a contemporary Samoan artist, right, Yuki's. came and I remember her standing up and Yuki is like a very controversial artist. Um, so when I saw Fata get up, I was like, oh, it's an old Samoan lady. She's going to be so mean to this Fafa finger. <laughs> but then when I heard what she said, I was like, man, this lady's cool, yeah? Like, <laughs> <laughs> she, she like, is cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and you mentioned that the... Um, the director has to remind you that this is the character doing these yeah. things, and you have to remember that this is this mm -hmm. part of the script. And, and this is one of the most, I think, mm -hmm. most beautiful parts of art in general, mm -hmm. and my favorite mm -hmm. type of art is theater, that um, A, you, it, it is a way to experience for the audience and for us to you know, tell stories and experience things in a very, very safe way, because at the end right. of the show, the lights are going to come up and people are going to go home. You know, yeah. everybody's safe, and you can talk about really difficult mm -hmm. things and move through difficult subjects. But for we actors, I'm gonna I'm gonna say I believe that there's uh, we all have 
we all have darkness within us mm -hmm. and you know there but for the grace of God go I I, I, I think of that a lot that mm -hmm. under those circumstances under those circumstances Joe you mm -hmm. can you say for certain you wouldn't be a vastly different person yeah. and possibly not someone mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I, I personally love playing characters who do or say things that make me go, ew, mm -hmm. I would never do that. I would never be in that mm -hmm. situation. Um, I, I like to think that, but the fact is, under those circumstances, who knows? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. If you're starving or you're hungry and you've got kids to feed, right. are you going to steal? Mm -hmm. Maybe. Mm -hmm. you know, so yeah. Yeah. this yeah. is a way, enjoy yeah. that part of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I think this is what specific literature um, uh, is about. You know, it's about, uh, it's a response to Western uh, representation where uh, Pacific Islanders, for example, were like two-dimensional characters, flat, uh, stereotyped, and all that. And so our writers have come up uh, and presented not just, you know, the public face of Samoans, for example, where you got to follow the rules and all that, but also the subtext. You know, there is sex under the, t you know, you lift the tablecloth, uh, as Sylvie Gal would say, you see a lot of darkness, you know, and so, so I think that's why uh, the play is, is a delight in that respect that it, it, you know, it is going to tell our kids, yeah, we're not all goody two shoes, you know, we're human beings with. You know, we have our ugly, what, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm -hmm. uh, and sex and violence, which is one of the topics in my classes, uh, is, you know, is quite alive in, in the writer's mm -hmm. work, uh, the work of Albert Wendt and Sophie Gell. And, but that's the motivation, and I'm sure Victor Roger also saw that, mm -hmm. you know, that we're not all these enlightened uh, uh, Christians you know, where sex is, you know, not talked about and all that. Well, Joe and I know that, yeah, okay, don't talk about it in front of yeah. um, the other gender or in front of the adults, but, you know, in the back, you know, the boys are having fun, yeah. And that's the scary part, though, that I think Samoa, Samoan culture is very um, conservative publicly, I guess. So we don't talk about these kind of things. Like I've never had the birds and the bees talk with my mom or my dad. You know, like you learn we from don't, your friends. Yeah, I learn yeah. from your friends, and sometimes your friends don't really know anything either. You know, <laughs> yeah. usually they don't know. So to talk about it is already kind of scary enough as a Samoan in public, but then to actually have to like mm -hmm. perform it, like yeah. You hardly even see couples hold hands in Samoa. Like, public display really? of affection is yeah. very rare. Like, they don't kiss in public. My grandparents were not touchy-feely. Yeah. They're very, oh. at least yeah. in front of everyone. I don't know what happens in the dark, you know, but at least in public, you don't. So when I'm doing this in public, like, even kissing someone in public, I'm like, Ooh. Yeah, yeah, I mean. <laughs> There's I a for, lot for, more than kissing going on. Yeah, for the, scene, for the scenes I'm in, for the scenes I'm in, you know, it's like, oh, wow. How do I face you know the sun the next day? You mm. know, but um, I think Joe and I understand enough about the arts. That, uh, I think being in academics and mm. and being able to transcend some of these you know uh, uh, ideologies, if you will, about you know certain aspects of life, yeah. and also kind of understanding how culture can be hypocritical as well. Mm -hmm. You know, there are a lot of double standards. So, uh, I mean, as I'm one at my age, you know, I, I feel empowered that you damn me. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm telling you, older yeah. Samoan women can say whatever they want to say, do whatever they want to do. All they right. usually have the I dirtiest mouths. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah. what, what were your thoughts when you read this script? Oh, I was laughing the whole way through. <laughs> and then uh, when, when uh, I talked with Harry and they needed a, a cultural consultant, I said, yeah, I'm glad they do that. But, you know, after reading the play, I thought, I'd like to try out Salamoana. <laughs> so and, without even thinking about, you know, uh, what, could, what that could mean in terms of actually portraying her. Mm. So right now I'm having to, you know, uh, I'm having these conversations with myself about it's going to be all right, you know, because sometimes I thought, 
oh my God, how are my students going to mm. see me now after <laughs> watching <laughs> the preview? Yeah. But then I say, it's the arts. This is what I tell them. Mm. It's the arts. You, you, you take risks. And it's mm. a way for society to address some problems in a safe manner. And I think it's necessary, you know. Yeah. I had yeah. the was fortunate enough to meet uh, Lani Went Young, mm. who's an uh, up-and-coming Samoan author. And um, she's the niece of Albert Went. Yeah. And she uh, discussed publicly um, issues of domestic violence in Samoa and uh, child mm. sexual abuse. And she received a lot of um, hate mail for that and a lot of just haters in, yeah. in general mm. telling her, you shouldn't talk about that in public. And it, it wasn't until, until that moment when I seen the reaction she was getting from the Samoan community that it is necessary if we're going to tackle these serious issues of domestic violence and child abuse then we have to find avenues to discuss it and I think the arts is a great way oh, to do yes. it through this play so yeah. oh yeah it's an important story to tell yes yeah, yeah. yeah. somehow and if whether or not you were in the play you would want your students mm -hmm. to see it oh yes so. yes um, and uh, you know we have this this um, Fengainga uh, system in Samoa between brothers and sisters. Mm. I don't understand and, that one. And uh, where um, brothers and sisters are equal, uh, and then brothers take care of their sisters and make sure they don't run into trouble or end up with the wrong man. So there is this pact that they have, and that's why sex as a subject is taboo. You do not talk sex with your female or your male relatives, oh. uh, only in your own um, uh, gender groups. Mm. Uh, so, so breaking out of that, uh, for me as a teacher, who are teaching a lot of Samoan students, I have to ask them first, uh, are you related to anybody in this class? <laughs> Uh, and if, if some of them are, then I tone down. I don't get rid of the subject, but I watch my language, what I say, and then, you know, <laughs> oh, <laughs> to be wow. very careful. Um, but so far, nobody has complained. Uh, I think maybe, in, if at all, I'm, I mean, I'm encouraging them mm. to be open. That in academics, you can say some of these things. Uh, without being, you know, scolded or... I think it satisfies the curiosity that all young people have, yeah. and the Samoans have it, and yeah. I think to get it in an academic setting where it's um, potentially less, I guess, perverted, you know, than if yeah. it's something done in the dark consistently, and it's easy to twist it and take advantage of individuals when uh, yeah. they're not able to speak openly or publicly about it, mm. you know? Mm. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize what hurdles you both had with the show. I, I knew that you didn't have experience as an actor, <laughs> and, and you, have, you, you have been in yeah, a um, show before, right? Uh, I was in uh, The Songmaker's Chair. Songmaker's that Chair. was um, quite a while uh, ago. Yeah, 2006. Okay. 2007. Yeah. Yeah, 2006. So yeah. you still you had a long acting hiatus. That's a hurdle. I'm I'm yeah. going through the same hurdle. I haven't yeah. been on the stage yeah. in a full yeah, show right. so in a long time. <laughs> and then the rigor, you know, the the time you have to put in, and mm. and um, so this is what uh, you can see. Someone's love to act, and and Joe, you can, they love to be on stage. <laughs> they love to perform. Uh, but one of the things I'm finding with my students is they don't quite understand the rigor and the commitment uh, that's important for, um, you know, a stage production. Mm -hmm. um, so, because, you know, in the village when, when, okay, you come for practice, you know, and you do this and you do that. Um, Western theater, I think, requires the individual to be a lot more committed, um, you know, uh, because you know that that's a future for them. For us, it's like, oh, right, we perform today. We get up and dance. Mm. Okay, uh, we go on with normal life. And then, when's the next performance? Yeah. And, yeah. and it's always, it's always a celebration, or you know, uh, of something. Uh, so Western art, you know, is 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 um, it's quite different. It's um, more of a craft, right? That there there are lines to stay within. Mm. Yeah. Let's say. We need to go to an, another break. We will be right back, so please stay tuned. We'll see you in a moment. Aloha. I'm Hunter Hevelin, host of Sustainable Hawaii here at Think Tech Hawaii. You can tune in every week on Thursday at 2 p.m.
to see interviews with sustainability professionals from around the state and even further abroad, learning about activities with water management, food security, waste management, and a whole host of other uh, fascinating opportunities to get engaged with making a greener island. So if you're interested in making the transition from consuming, produ consuming individuals to communities of producers, check us out every Thursday. Aloha. Hi, we're back. This is, what, Center Stage is the name of the show. <laughs> the Think Tech of I digital series. Um, we have to stop talking during breaks. I'm just saying. <laughs> I am uh, Donna Blanchard, and I'm here talking with Joe Ramsey and Fata Samanu Klutz, who are actors in the show. My name is Gary Cooper at Kumukuhua Theater. Um, okay, we have one more segment left, so I would like to I would like to talk about the fact that I, I would like to talk about your processes, what your thoughts have been going through the rehearsal process from reading the script and understanding now that I have a greater understanding of the hurdles you you both have to overcome um, we had uh, David on the show mm -hmm. and it, David's an incredible director he's also been kicking our bottoms f from day yeah. one really mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's been doing an excellent job mm -hmm. of uh, cracking the whip um, so uh, Joe would you like to start and uh, talk a little bit about when we first got into rehearsals, what was going on in your head? Man, I was just so intimidated, I think. I knew everyone kind of had uh, experience acting, and uh, I was just scared, I think. You know, I come from a very short dancing background, and it's kind of strict what you can and cannot do. So there was times where I was dancing, and I would try to do like my own character in my head. I'll make up a storyline and start doing something different, but then they'll very quickly tell you, like, you need to do what you were taught. And then uh, that might be a Samoan side of me. Samoans are all about improv and comedy and making stuff up on the spot to do what you got to do for the entertainment of people. Mm -hmm. But in a professional setting, like at the cultural center, they want consistency and they don't want things to change. So coming here when he's telling me, like, okay, just be the character. Like, he allows you freedom to do whatever you want. I was, I was kind of overwhelmed. And still now, like, kind of scared to do too much and I'm always looking at him waiting for like an approval like yeah just do it just like this and I kind of want him to tell me just do it just like this but he wants us to, for it to be organic and just come out of what we think it would be natural so that it looks natural on stage which is an approach to um, performance that I haven't had before so that's kind of my challenge and then learning lines oh my gosh like <laughs> dancing is like zero lines you just yeah. choreography dance smile but lines are a whole nother choreography oh. is the same thing you're memorizing something you're just speaking with your body mm. instead right, right? yeah i yeah. uh, so let me add to that the background that david david began our work together by talking about our motivations behind mm. the lines and mm -hmm. and i think once you decide this is what my character really wants to have out of to come from this scene or this mm. page of text, then it is, it is, it does narrow the scope of, yeah. now, now this is where I am, this is where my energy is, this is where my focus mm -hmm. is, yeah, so you're, you're not so... Yeah. Yeah. And it helped, I mean, well, I think it was like a double-edged sword with that, I guess, technique of learning the motivations first, because I memorized all the motivations and kind of the storyline of what my character is doing. And then I just started um, making up my own lines because <laughs> I knew what he wanted to accomplish. And then uh, I think we were talking about it earlier, how we just kind of um, improvise lines to just let the flow. And those end up becoming the lines that you memorize, mm. which is I have to break a few of the lines that I've made up. Because I'm sure the playwright's going to come and think, oh, you think you can write a better play He's than me? <laughs> <laughs> like, He's no, no, know. no. <laughs> but that is, I th uh, that is part of my process that I go through. At some mm. point, you put down the script, and you know the the words are golden. Mm. By opening night, we want those words to be absolutely verbatim. Mm -hmm. But there are there there is a, a process of learning them, and um, it begins with fudging things a little bit here mm. and there. It's mm. most important that you know your motivations. That's how you memorize them, mm. and then and then you get to the verbatim, mm. the little things. <laughs> you know, yeah. the little yeah. things, like my character exchanges the word film for movie all the time, mm -hmm. you know, those, those sort of things mm -hmm. I got to figure yeah. out when yeah. she says what. Yeah. Um, I, so, and, and Fata, 
How's this uh, been from you for you from the beginning? I, I think from the beginning it, it, it's been a, a, a wonderful uh, artistic and intellectual experience for me. Um, working with David and, and Jim and, and the way they involved us in the thinking, you know, because, you know, uh, on average, you just listen to the director, he tells you what to do and you do it. Uh, but here, yeah, right from the get go, taking us through the objectives and, you know, uh, easing us into the characters and understanding, you know, what could be the subtexts. Uh, and so on. For me, that was a great learning experience because, you know, I want to do theater on campus with with my stories. You know, the the literature that we we do, and knowing that uh, students really would rather do that than read a text. Uh, so I'm taking from from this experience some tips on how to to do uh, you know, to stage something. Uh, but it's just it's just the uh, the, the give and take that the director allows us as actors uh, to be engaged in this has been just marvelous. Yeah. He asks a think, lot of questions. He asks a lot of <laughs> questions and he gets us to think, you know. I mean, I come out of a work day dealing with students, I'm thinking, okay, I don't have to think. Somebody else is going to do the thinking for me? <laughs> well, not so David. It all so gets us, I uh, push us, what's your objective? I'm going, what? <laughs> what objective? You know, so, so it's been, you know, I mean, there's not been a moment where I'm not looked forward to coming to uh, to rehearsals. You know, He's so. very encouraging yeah, and, enc and encouraging, kind. Yeah. yeah. Um, so he doesn't shout, you know, make you feel <laughs> small. Uh, yeah. uh, but he does it in some, such a manner. Well, he, um, and he's, he's truthful also. I don't yes. feel like he's yeah. blown sunshine up anyone's right. skirts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Do they say that in some yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I think, it, and that's why, you know, the scenes that Joe and I um, are much more manageable because of, you know, of the, uh, um, the way the, the directors have approached it, you know, to get us into mm. that and, and uh, I mean, with Asheville uh, there as well to, you know, Ashley. to Ashley to uh, co-direct. I mean, she brings in the perspective, you know, as well. And so that's that's a nice uh, melding there of, of um, their talents and their skills, yeah. and we're benefiting from it. Yeah. And it feels like he yeah. like generally cares about you, you know, as right. a person, mm -hmm. not just the performance or what you can, what you're able or not able to do for the play but he, when he asks you outside like how are you how are things outside like those are questions you know your boss <laughs> usually never asks you <laughs> right, like they right. don't care you just yeah. get your I job that, done I mean you there's know? great rapport you mm -hmm. know yeah. among us uh, the way he makes us feel like one body you know that we're one family you know not individual actors strike to do our own thing on the side yeah. there and trying to shine you know above everybody else and that's it's a collaboration. It's a collaboration. It really is. Yeah. Do you find that um, when we're, we spent so much time thinking about motivation, uh, uh, particularly in the beginning of rehearsals and asking ourselves, so why am I saying this? What's going on? Uh, and and we, we did this sort of work when I was in college, but mm. uh, it's been a while since I visited that. I found that I would ask myself those questions just yeah. in yeah. regular life. Now, what do I really yeah. want to have come out of this conversation? Because yeah. yeah. maybe it would be better to yeah. just say that. Yeah. Because yeah. you yeah. really see how the subtext really gets people really. in trouble. Yeah. Life yeah. would be easier yeah. if yeah. you just said, no, what I really want is. Mm -hmm. I thought of it the other way. Like, mm -hmm. I think of what is someone saying to me, and if they're being aggressive, I think, well, what is their intention towards mm -hmm. me? Right. Are they really trying to be mean or condescending or are they really trying to hurt me or are they just frustrated and maybe they have another way they could say it but I'm going to try to assume it's something yeah. good yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah because it always is even yeah. when you play the most heinous characters and all of our characters do some awful things yeah. in the show yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we all do them because yeah. for yeah. our own for for safety, for security, mm -hmm. for love, for all mm -hmm. of the right yeah. reasons yeah. we're doing these things. Yeah. So I think, I, I think that's one of the beauties of 
um, being an actor, being involved in mm -hmm. theater, is that you really get a chance to look at life from that perspective, and then it gives you, and it begs you to mm -hmm. look at the aggressive yeah. person in the grocery store line yeah. and say, <laughs> that person probably had a really mm -hmm. bad day. Mm -hmm. Maybe I won't yeah. bang my yeah. card into him like I want yeah. to. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's the power of, of the arts, you know, as a reminder to ourselves that we are human beings with these complex personalities. Mm -hmm. Now, how to deal with the various voices. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Well, yeah. then that's some of the, yeah. the beauty of Victor's mm. writing is that it, these characters are so real. They have so much depth yeah. to them yeah. Yeah. that... Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. The, the beauty yeah. in his lines is that it's yeah. built in for us. It's yeah. like a symphony that all of the emotion yeah. Yeah. is in there. Yeah. And I feel like we have a five-week run, um, and I really feel like we're, we're, mm. we're on a trajectory. Yeah. It's just yeah. that we're, there's no end to what we're yeah. going to be able to find in the characters. Well, last night after practice, uh, Kiki, uh, Joe, and I sat outside and un unwound, and then we were talking about sex in our communities, the, the thinking and the, you know, what goes on in there. Uh, um, you know, remembering that none of this is on the surface, this kind of thing is, you know, I mean, um, we, like he said earlier, you learn it from your friends or other avenues. Mm. Uh, yeah, and what do they so know? What are they learning? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's uh, thought provoking, yeah. yeah. And I think this is one of those shows that, in the same way it leads to really great conversations for us, I think it's going to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm, my expectation is it's going to do that for the audience as yeah. well. And I that's, hope so. And that's a great show. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's, that's a great piece of art. Yeah. 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 I'm definitely hesitant, because I come from a pretty um, religious community here on the island where I live. So I'm kind of hesitant to invite a lot of people, because I'm not sure if they're prepared, I think, to approach these types of subjects or to experience them um, publicly, I think. I think, so I'm trying to, I want to invite everybody, but then I'm also worried, like, oh, maybe some people are not able to handle the themes, yeah. but I'll leave that up to them, I guess, you know? Yeah. Yeah, maybe we need to give them some, a little disclaimer. <laughs> Show them this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry, but we've got to go. I'm enjoying okay. the conversation. We can continue. Um, but I'll see there. you guys <laughs> later. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here. We hope that you will come see the show, and we hope that any piece of art that you witness will lead to great conversations for you, because that is what it's all about. I'm go I'd like to thank my guests for being here, Joe and Fanta. Um, there's a few more people I would like to thank. Our studio engineer, Zuri Bender, who is in my ear. Our floor manager, Sachi Slomov, who's right over there. Hi, Sachi. Mm -hmm. Our communications director, Chrissy Gothigan, and Jay Fidel, who somehow manages to put it all together. We thank you and come back next week because we will be, I will be talking with Victor Roger, our playwright. I'm looking forward to that conversation too. Have a great week. Bye.